Howdy, Mark Serbu, uh, mechanical engineer, uh, CNC machinist. Uh, yeah, uh, you all probably didn't realize, but it's harvest season. Trunnion harvest season. <laughs> Wasn't that a good one? Yeah, I'm not quitting my day job. So if you've got something like that thing on the left and you want to make it look like that thing on the right, after watching this video, you'll see how I did it and maybe come away inspired. Maybe. All right, so you're probably starting out with something like this. And you gotta figure out how to get rid of all those nice weld bumps on there. And obviously the straightforward process is just to grind them all off with a grinding wheel or death wheel or some kind of handheld grinder. But I'm gonna use a milling machine. Now, getting it to sit flat is going to be a little bit tough because it's got so many weird bumps and angles to it. And here I am being silly. The first thing I'm doing is taking off this little bump. So put it upside down. And see, so you've got it flat. I uh, you know what? I'm going to grind that up. Don't want to let it sit flat. Alright, so I've got that offending slag ground off. Now I can clamp this sucker down. Alright, that ain't going nowhere. Nice thing about a CNC mill or a manual mill with a digital readout is that you can cut through that weld blob and just as soon as you touch the sheet metal you can set your zero. In this case we know the sheet metal is 50 thousandths thick so that's how deep we'll go maximum. Here I'm using a carbide end mill with a TICN coating or TIALN something like that. Uh, so if I went through and hit the hardened trunnion it wouldn't be a big deal but if you're using high speed steel that tool would die a quick death as soon as you hit that, that hardened stuff underneath. And here's the result. On the first one I just plunged straight down and uh, after that I decided I needed to go plus or minus 20 thou in X and Y and that seemed to work a lot better. You just never know how far that weld is going to penetrate and stick. And heck with the computer controlled equipment and all the finesse and blah 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 now we get to go medieval on its ass. Kind of fun right? There's just something about a hammer and a chisel, right? Heck, I'm not even using a hammer. I use a piece of brass rod. Why? Because I didn't feel like walking across the shop and getting the hammer. Camera makes it tough. It's right in the way. <laughs> Yes, it's the death wheel, with very little personal protection equipment. Hey, we're living in times of COVID-19, riots, murder hornets, super volcano, who cares? Who cares about PPE? All right, and I've machined out all the freaking spot welds, plug welds, and I'll tell you, this is the this is the toughest part because every time I, I machine one of these away, I just wanted to beat the thing off right away. I didn't want to have to wait. Wait, beat the thing off. You know what I mean. Now, the smartest thing to do is you get this lip off of here because it's fold it over pretty hard and that's going to hang on tight so just beat the crap out of that. That wasn't too 
tough. And this trunning is uh, heat treated. It's, it's pretty strong, so you don't have to worry about ruining it unless you really crank down the vise. And so just use your head. That's that's nice. It broke free really easily, really easily. Got one hanger on here. Huh. Wasn't really hanging on too hard, was it? There we go. Training is free. It's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt and tedious process, but not too awful. It took some time. I probably spent almost an hour on that. That's interesting. I can't wait to look through that hole while cycling the gun. That's going to be cool. And here's a nice before and after shot. Looks like they drilled uh, six millimeter holes through the sheet metal to do the plug welding. Not that we care. But, uh, yeah, this thing cleans up very nicely. Sandblasted it, obviously. It's very hard. Um, I'd like to get it rock well tested. It's definitely uh, really up there on the Rockwell scale. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some good information out of this, uh, something that'll help you with your trunnion harvesting. You ever go camping when you're kids and you sit around the campfire and you uh, put a flashlight under your chin and the kind of shadow that goes over your face kind of makes it look eerie. Well, this is what it looks like when trunnions do it.